So imagine this, right? You've stopped the invading forces of hell three times now, twice you've slain the Icon of Sin, technically one of them was his little brother, the Demon Spitter, and no matter what you do, they just won't stop coming. But you finally get some good news. The UAC, which is uh, good now, I guess, has started work on a quote-unquote quantum accelerator, meant to permanently close these hell portals for good. So you think, damn, okay, I guess I've earned myself a vacation, only for that vacation to be cut short from Satan opening more more hell portals than these six quantum accelerators can handle, just one short of stopping the invasion. The UAC may have called for a full squad of marines to stop it, but you're the fucking doom guy, so it's time to go in alone and stop the Icon of Sin's new big brother, the Demon Gatekeeper. This is the premise for the second half of Final Doom, the Casali Brothers Plutonia Experiment, an expansion that's probably tied for my most requested video on this channel, alongside Metroid Dread, surprisingly. But guys, why Plutonia? Plutonia. Do you just want to see me suffer? Do you like it when I scream and make funny noises? Or do you just like it when I make something that's pretty hard look pretty easy? Cause uh, I've got good news if that's the case. And to make my adventure a little bit more interesting, I've decided to do this without any mid-level saves. Sure, I could have also done it pistol starting, but uh, you know why I didn't do that. If I'm shot dead in the crypt of the Necrosphere, then we're starting that level all the way over again. I am doing this for your entertainment. And also, uh, someone who works at Did You Know Gaming, said he'd let me voice an episode if I did it. Yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a sellout, sorry. If you don't believe me or just want some relaxing no commentary Doom playthroughs to study to, my entire playthrough will be posted in my archive channel, link in description. Uh, all footage on that channel is free for you to use in your own videos, like if you need b-roll footage for talking about one of the games on there. Just make sure to credit me. That's it. I really don't care. All right, anyway, let's... So what the hell is Doomguy even doing in Central Africa, or is this Congo a name only? Welcome to one of the best opening levels in the classic Doom Saga, in my honest opinion. Yeah, there's Chain Gunners, Mancubi, multiple Arch Vials, multiple Revenants, a Pain Elemental, and more. Okay, actually, it's probably gonna be a little hard to sell this on you being a good opening level. Uh, it's not that hard, I swear. Just run up these stairs to loot a shotgun off these sergeants, grab a blue armor and a backpack behind this wall that is suspiciously not marked as a secret, and you're just about all set to start venturing out into the Congo. I did make a mistake running out to this chain gunner nest at the beginning, which is where we need to go, but Congo has a lot of optional routes that we could take to load ourselves up with a rocket launcher and SSG, all in this first level. Oh, and that lone little chain gunner up there you might think is just a measly flesh turret? Yeah, there's an Archie behind that wall behind him that's keeping him alive, laughing at us from his protective box to give us a taste of how creative these arch vials are going to be used throughout Plutonia. Somehow it wasn't even the chain gunner that ended up getting me. I really thought I would have made it out of there alive, but nope, a single revenant is all that it took. It's like I learned nothing from Back to Saturn X. So this time I ignore the chain gunner nest and head right for the warehouse section for the super shotgun. And yeah, there's an arch vial loose in here. What warehouse isn't infested with these things? It's not like the SSG is being guarded or anything. I could just stun lock them with it if I want to. So now I head back down to the skeleton pit, grab my rocket launcher, and now we just got a... Oh boy, our first chain gunner death! I've killed this damn Mancubus three times, I'm not shotgunning this motherfucker again. Okay, okay, bye. Okay, so you get the blue key, burn some of your shotgun ammo on these Mancubi guarding the stage's exit teleporter. You know, the same one that Kasali made for that map in TNT Evolution. These are the exit teleporters for 31 of the maps across this whole campaign. I used to think that these were the quantum accelerators, but there's 31 of these across the whole campaign. Actually, 32, one of them just doesn't work. So I don't think that they are those, and God knows that Doom lore is anything but inconsistent, trust me. Oh, also, to keep this video interesting and engaging, I'm going 
going to be ranking every level on this in a score from zero to two. Uh, actually, if I give a level a zero, I'm just not gonna say anything. And these points will be given kind of strictly. Even if I thought a level is just okay, I will just not give it anything. I'll be giving one point to a level that I think is fairly good, and I'll give two points for every level that I think is just a masterpiece of classic Doom mapping. The reason I'm doing this is so that at the end of the video, we can put together a list of all the points given to each stage that got points, see which of the Casali brothers made it, and then, you know, see which brother comes out with the higher score. It'll be definitive, and everyone watching will hate it, I promise. That said, congratulations Congo, you get two Casali coins. Oh yeah, did I mention this video is sponsored by Nixie? Cause uh, it is. Sponsored by Nixie. I've been using Nixie's wizard controller for so long at this point that I forgot what the Joy-Cons look like, all while reviving that childhood nostalgia that I have for the GameCube, but with some more modern adjustments. These things feel nice and light and just as ergonomic as you remember, yet are way higher quality than their price point would suggest. The shoulder buttons have this nice hair trigger clickiness to them, the right stick is well, normal thumb size, which is pretty nice. And for the gamer enthusiast inside of you, we've also got turbo buttons, programmable back buttons, and best of all, in my opinion, gyro support, which was amazing when playing through Pikmin 1 plus 2, because it gave me the best of the OG GameCube controllers, while also letting me aim around with the flick of my wrist, just like it's new play control. I've never really had a good experience with third-party controllers, or at least never ones that I prefer more than the first-party stuff, but Nixie has won me over with the wizard controller. But I hear you. What if you want something more slick and modern. Again, I won't judge. Nixie sent me the Chaos Pro just for this, which has become my go-to controller for both my Switch and Steam Deck when they're both docked. Seriously, just ask anyone in person that I visited and they'll tell you that I showed up to play Smash Brothers with this thing. But if you want to bring that modernity to your handheld Switch as well, well the Hyperion series exists just for you. So support me by following my affiliate link in the description or use code Grab my not business. at checkout for 15% off and tell me what you think of them. Big thank you to Nixie for supporting what I do and sponsoring this video. Are you an Indiana Jones fan? Oh, you are? Damn, I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, but hey, you might get a hearty chuckle out of this invisible bridge that's directly inspired by it. You know, the, the one from the movie with a crusade in the title. Or maybe you won't like it, because it's, it's actually kind of a bitch. I died in this room so many goddamn times. And to even access the bridge, you need to shoot this computer terminal looking texture just to raise these little four spokes that mark the corners of the bridge so you could cross it. Is the bridge even there before you shoot the texture? Uh, only God knows. Me, if I cared to check. It's not even that early into the map. You gotta go through this lowering water section that slowly reveals imps and chain gunners. It's like the Doom equivalent of an auto-scroller segment, and it's pretty cool, but it just overstays its welcome on repeat playthroughs, especially if you are restarting the level every time you die. That and this hallway of tricks and traps that throws demons at you if you open the wrong one, but because I'm going for all kills in this playthrough, I gotta open each one of them anyway, so uh, again, it's a cool idea, it just kinda overstays its welcome without mid-level saves. Oh, what's this, an ambush of hit scanners and a barrel? Aw, oh, dude, that's nothing. You know what ended up killing me instead? Only the easiest crusher segment imaginable. <laughs> Oh, okay. So then once you're done running the circuit through this crusher for the yellow key, you... <laughs> okay. Then when you run the circuit to get this yellow key, you trade that yellow key for your red key that we could then use at the end of this invisible bridge to just end the level. It's not my favorite, but I think it's pretty cool. I'll give you one Kasali coin. Man, I never should have smoked that shit. Now I'm in Tenochtitlan. Call me crazy, but I don't think the Aztec used chainsaws for their sacrifices. Or had mancubi. Or demons. Or guns. Really cool of the stage to use the exact same brown water texture for the floors that don't hurt you, and then the ones that do, that's really fun. Oh, and that red hot lava texture down there on the floor? You can walk on that just fine. Of course you can. What are you saying? I'm not exactly complaining. I'm just letting you know that you can't really trust the floors that the Casalis throw at you. Oh, and that chainsaw secret from before? Once you leave it, you can't come back. So if you forget to grab it while you're down there, or if you forget to kill the Mancubus like I did in one of my attempts, you gotta restart the whole level back up. That's cool. Oh great, now they're coming out of the floor. Please sir, I just need this key. I've been so good. My sacrifice may have been in vain, but so will his. Ironically, it was the Baron's fireball that killed me. Uh, something doesn't feel right here.
Yeah, that's right, you can't trick me, heavy weapons dudes. Uh, except what you do. Also, Trav Guy, you might say. What is this shit? In the opening, you played music from the community midi pack for Plutonia, but I still hear the Prince's music. And you'd be correct, I actually didn't start using the midi pack until level 5. Unlike TNT's evolution, no custom music was made for the release of Plutonia, but our friends Jimmy Paddock had some uh, other friends come alongside him and make a custom soundtrack for every dang map in Plutonia. And it's good. Really, really damn good. I learned about this from you guys, actually. A comment told me about the music pack that was made for Evolution for the levels that didn't get custom music. I'll include a link in the description under the condition that you tell me what your favorite music track is from it. Uh, and then you should probably tell the actual composer. It might make their day. Caged is when it starts getting interesting, and it's probably how it's gonna make you feel throughout this level. Unless you're, you know, into that kind of shit. I ain't judging. Not yet. Eeny, meeny, miny. So oh, what the fuck? So oh, what the fuck? Yeah, Caged is really living up to its name, forcing us into these tight caged areas, restricting our movement, but still leaving us exposed to enemy hit scans or projectiles, only lifting its claustrophobic grip on you when it drops you into sewage water that burns you alive. Aside from the hit scanner ambush at the beginning that managed to kill me three separate times, and that little chain gunner jump scare back there, Caged doesn't really have a lot going for it. It gives me a plasma rifle, that's pretty cool, and there's this Baron ambush that I think is also very cool, loads you up with rockets, those are nice to have, but the same room has this sort of countdown timer switch in it with a fuck ton of health bonuses, which I guess is also nice to have. It's just, I, I'm running out of things to say here. This is the only level in Plutonia to not end with you jumping into one of those teleporters. I mean, you do still end the level on one, but it's in a cage, so you gotta flip the switch. Uh, I guess you're turning it back on. And just like the crazy scientist that invented a Faraday cage on accident, I missed a kill! So that means I gotta- ugh. Ghost Town is a bitch. Putting you in this large open area surrounded by hit scanners on all sides? Now that might be why they give you blue armor right at the beginning and leave a portal to a megasphere orb that you can grab at any point during the map. You just gotta sort of ration it out. It's got some cool set pieces though, like this flesh staircase that unleashes an arch vial as support for some pinkies. That'd be a pretty good trap if they didn't leave the path into this room unlocked for me to retreat into safely, which ends up luring the arch vial out before the pinkies can reach me, so I, I kinda ruined the whole thing. This room releasing the barons on you when you interact with what you think is a door here though, uh, that's a pretty good trap. And then this one... I panicked into cover because of one of the chain gunners, but yes, I'm also now pissing myself because there's a spider demon on the field. I really shouldn't have, I have more than enough rockets and plasma cells to deal with her, but you know, in the moment it's, it's a little uneasy. It's always the chain gunners. Why can't I shoot through the corpses? God damn it. One Kasali buck. Remember Menser's Baron Den from TNT Evolution that only had a handful of Barons in it despite the name? Yeah, Dario's got a one up on the team there. The Baron's Slayer has zero Barons in it. Take that, TNT Evolution. Dario described Map 6 on his YouTube channel as a bunch of non thematic pieces all glued together to a central hub, each given their own aesthetic to keep them different, which is probably a factor in why this map is probably the easiest one yet. I didn't die once, but my fascination is still that it's kind of a technical wonder and that this map takes advantage of something called a voodoo doll. This is how you're able to pick up all of those weapons by walking under this skull cube in the center of the map. That's all I'll say on that subject. Decino has this whole video talking about how this works. I'll include a link if you're curious. And yes, Dario has a goddamn YouTube channel where he does, or at least did, little post-mortems on his old Doom maps. I'd love to see more industry veterans do shit like this. This is pretty cool. It's a good map, it just has some small blemishes in it. Like, this feels like a very Sandy Peterson-esque map. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be summoning here. Fucking Fox News? There's even a cyber demon in this one, making its first appearance in the expansion, so honestly, it's not too bad. It's a very safe usage of this boss demon. Just be sure to not get hit with any splash damage behind you. He was the guardian, according to this victory text. This is where that working prototype that we needed is supposed to be, but it isn't. The demons must have taken it. Keep moving, keep fighting, keep killing, and oh yeah, keep living too. Yeah, thanks, Dario. That's great advice. Uh... 
Cool, yeah, nice. I don't like saying courtyard out loud. It feels gross. The opening has this really cool onslaught with Mancubi and this small yet open space. That could be way worse. I could have had invisibility. Thankfully, I've got enough rockets on me to make the US military blush. Plutonia may as well have been the precursor to Quake with how you use your rocket launcher as your primary weapon for half of this campaign. Oh, hold on, I'm missing a couple kills. You sly dog, you almost caught me, you sons of bitches. I give you one Casal Arena. Realm is one of those levels that starts to lean into more forgettable territory. I'll still give it one Coomer Playcoin for this archfile trap that it pulls at the end of the level, spawning it directly in front of you without any warning. It got me to panic so much I ended up killing myself with my own rocket. That's good stuff. You get jumped by a bunch of revenants at the end, but you can take advantage of how their homing rockets can't raise back up once they start descending by jumping down into the water below, which there's a teleporter to take you back up. So all the homing rockets just kind of inevitably hit the wall of the dam. I say this because you can't really run past them. The portal to exit the level takes time to lower to keep you from just running past everything. Similar to a trick that Romero did in Sigil 1 with the yellow door taking forever to come down. Until this point though, I think the level's just kind of boring. Visually, it's not that exciting to look at, and sure, there are some tense encounters, and it's kind of cool how the level starves you for health and armor, with only 9 med packs and 13 armor pickups across the whole map, but it's nothing that the campaign hasn't done before now. Now, you know? The same goes for Abattoir for the most part. The arena with these cylindrical crushers is pretty cool, especially when you bait enemies into them for some fun kills. But I end up just getting Thy Flesh Consumed flashbacks, which honestly, aside from the first couple levels, I think Thy Flesh Consumed is also kind of forgettable, so I don't know. Onslaught, on the other hand, much like his boss fight in Marvel vs. Capcom 1, is a breath of fresh air. I feel like I shouldn't have liked it this much for the 40 minutes it took me to beat it, but I did. You're constantly bombarded with chain gunners, cacos, revies, and a lot of them end up getting brought back to life by some archies that are let loose onto the map, making me approach everything differently from the beginning once I inevitably died and had to figure that out from the beginning. There's what I can only describe as an octagon of chain gunners that I'm confident is impossible to rush past without blue armor or an invisibility. Complete with a dickish teleporting baron trap at the end of the level, uh, it's it's really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Two coin sollies upon ye. And this finally brings us to... Hunted, an infamous death maze of archviles that are let loose on you once you pass the starting line. All of it put to the haunting tune of My Dead Little Bunny, the ending music from Doom's episode 3. Yeah, you see that sarcophagus over there with the dead Doom guy on it? The, the dead marine? That's gotta be you. Uh, maybe. Nowadays, map 11 isn't too bad. I've played enough Doom map packs to make archviles practically a non-threat as long as I know that they're coming. And so now that I know that they are always coming, I'm always prepared. Tie that in with Lipith's new MIDI track for Hunted and you've got an absolute banger of a level. Not to say that it wasn't before, just that this track is really freaking good. I almost considered using this for that opening little montage you saw at the beginning. I, I just really like the vibe that Bucket's Plus Fort had for map 06, so I ended up going with that instead. Not to be confused with my friend who's also a composer who goes by Buckets, who also happens to be another member on my podcast, The Crubcast, that airs every Tuesday on Twitch TV forward slash crub underscore official. Why am I shouting that out? Oh, no reason. I, I'm, I'm chewing. I'm covering up my face. Oh, that's why oh. that's there. I, was I didn't very... think anyone, I didn't <laughs> think I'd be talking this soon. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that archviles when there's only other archviles around aren't really that scary because they can't res fellow archviles. I might go as far as to even say that these are some of the least threatening archviles across all of Classic Doom. Your biggest threat in this maze is more so just the maze. Even following your maze etiquette to keep hugging the left wall isn't gonna save you here. Which is probably why they decided to go with a completely different tone for the midi pack. Spending all this time with most of the enemies of the level dead just trying to make your way to the end in this very very awkward maze is a little confusing. Even if all these arch vials are locked in here with me, I don't exactly want to spend my downtime trying to find where to go just hearing da 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 over and over and over. And for finishing the level, they just flat out give you a BFG with no strings attached. They wanted you to have this. Though what's ahead is akin to the end of E1M8 from Doom 1, where in order to get all of the kills for the level, it puts you in a sort of no-win scenario where you have to kill everything in front of you faster than you can die, because as soon as you die, you're taken to the next level with less health. If you are truly going for all kills, the best way to go in is to run into the teleporter and just spam the hell out of your BFG. Get as many 
of them stuck in that cone of vision as possible. You did it! You found the prototype accelerator! Now do what you do best, Doom Guy, and smash that freaking like button. I heard that if you say that, the like button actually jumps up now. Does it actually do that? I, I don't know, I've never seen it. There was nothing speedy about speed. It took me almost two hours to beat it, and that's because I went into the Archvile Teleporter at the end of the last level, which made me start this one at 1 HP. But I committed, I knew what I was getting into, and I died exactly 57 times in this level alone. That's roughly a death every two minutes I was recording. And 10 of those deaths were when I was still outside of the building, on the clean grass. Speed, much like the amphetamine, is a gauntlet that forces you to clear out two large pools of blood in the total bloodbath. Accompanied by some real fire and the flames dragon force shit in the midi. It's cool when you start. You start off in this sort of area with all this green grass and dead trees, surrounded by projectile enemies before you dwell in deeper into this man-made structure that's filled with hit scanners and arch vials. There is a cyber demon here, he killed me once, but I mostly just used him to spend a lot of my shotgun ammo on so I'm saving up on a lot of my more precious ammo types. It's not like I was exactly saving time, and also, please forget everything I said about arch vials being easy and in the last level, I was just trying to put on this macho tough guy persona because I died to this specific arch vial four times back to back. Now, honestly, I blame the fatigue of playing this level for almost two hours. I really should have listened to those Wii Sports warnings. That would have had me more prepared for the fucking teleporting arch vial. Dude's hitting me with that shadow clone jutsu shit. He's not that difficult. Just sort of stand still and wait for him to stop moving when he starts attacking you. Man, it's definitely daunting. Cool level. Definitely not because I died a lot. Two cast coins. Things calm down a bit with the crypt no matter how many dead space marines they put in that toxic sludge. In fact, we've actually got a couple of levels back to back that are just kind of easy, and by that I mean I didn't die in them. It uses arch vials in a really cool way by spawning one alongside some chain gunners acting as support. And look at this, it's kind of like a staircase, but more of a ladder, but really close together. We saw something like this in TNT Evolution, it's nothing too groundbreaking, but it's neat. Be sure to grab the Megasphere before leaving the level, other than that it's a pretty mellow stage. Genesis did what Dario don't, or maybe he did, I didn't check who made this one. It opens up with putting you in an area that reminds me a lot of Doom 2's The Crusher. It's mainly just the Hell Knights with the red sky and the grass. Uh, yeah, that's really it. But the trap where you fall into a teleporter spawn right where an invisibility power-up is that triggers uh, these walls to come down to reveal a whole bunch of enemies. That's a pretty good trap right there and made me consider giving this level one Kasali coin, uh, which I will. I should really be keeping track of this so that editing the end of this video is going to be easier. I won't, though the floating exit signs, that's a good touch. I like that. But Twilight is really anything but forgettable. Don't I don't know why they bothered calling map 4 caged when this cage is more caged than that caged. And also there's 19 secrets? Okay. I tried to take it easy at first, sniping these chain gunners from a distance with my shotgun and tap firing my chain gun, which really was not worth my time because there's an arch vial that spawns back there and picks them all back up. I'm glad I cleared them all out because there's a spider mastermind that spawns there later in the level. But I mean, it's pretty cool how this centerpiece, this like hub of the stage keeps changing as you go off into these forking paths to do, uh, you know, other progression shit. Don't forget get to dive into the blood below before you go into the secret exit if you're going for all kills. Yeah, who doesn't love a good classic Doom secret level? And aside from the Wolfenstein callback in Doom 2s, I think that this is some of classic Doom's best. This is the second hardest level we've got. We hope you have a save game ready. Master Marines only. So what do you tell me? We're some kind of master levels of Doom 2? I don't know what the fuck they were talking about with this one. I only died twice in this level, and this is my first time ever playing it. Yeah, full confession time, I've never played the secret levels of Plutonia until now. I was too afraid to. I was a little bit of what I like to call a wimp. But I don't know, this one wasn't that bad. A keyword, this one. The next one is pain. It's called Cyber Den because there's four cyber demons in these cages that we got to unlock, each taking us down different paths that eventually unlocks one of these cages for us to kill it, move on, keep going, kill the arch file behind the secret wall, but you know, standard stuff. Or does let the wall kill you? Who am I to judge? One of the paths gives you a berserk pack and a fuck ton of pinkies to punch out, but I'm not even gonna bother calling this a fist parade. I'm just standing right here, letting them all come to me. I do like the consistency of each of the cyber demon switches to release them being these sort of icon of sin switches. That's just good, memorable level design. But since you fight all the subsequent cyber demons back to back and only one at a time, they're not really that difficult. And they load you up with rockets too, so I'm just using them on the cyber demon despite their resistance to splash damage, just so that I'm not wasting ammo. I don't know. It's not a bad stage at all. I'll actually give it one Kasali buck. Just not as hard as that text wall made me think it was gonna be. Map 32 though. Oh boy.
I was stuck on go to it for over an hour. And this isn't like speed where I started the level at one health and just had to sort of pray for the best. No, they give you a mega sphere at the beginning and there's nine of them across this whole map. Go to it is intentionally meant to be a clusterfuck of a map on every difficulty. Enemy spawns, health pickups, power-ups, they are the same from I'm too young to die all the way up to ultraviolent. This stage was meant to kill you. You don't get anything extra for doing this secret level. You already have a full arsenal going into it. This is purely for bragging rights. And Milo knew that when making this. Ignoring all the demons here, this is just an even better Doom 2's map 1. But instead, there's 13 cyber demons, 19 arch vials, and over 20 mancubi. This shit borders on being a slaughter map. It might have been what was the progenitor to slaughter maps. Your rocket launcher is your best friend here, no matter what you're using it against. There's over 100 boxes of rockets in this stage. You gotta use them, man. Yeah, arch vials in the original exit room. That's fine. I have cover. A cyber demon with his head stuck in the wall in a tight space? That's a little scary. Not a problem. And this big ass courtyard here? Honestly, not too bad. Just keep moving. There's no hit scanners. Well, actually, there's one. It's a spider mastermind, but it's almost impossible to not get it to start infighting with something else. You just gotta pace yourself. Take it easy. And motherfucker! I don't think I would have held it together long enough to finish this level if it wasn't for the midi by Bucket, a fantastic medley of various Doom tracks that just makes for a fantastic secret level. It's really good. Alright, you good after that? You need a second? I did too, I don't blame you. Alright, I barely wrote down any notes for these next few levels, so I'm just gonna rapid fire some of these. The omen killed me a couple times by making me fall into this pit while getting the red key, that was pretty cool. And the bullet hell encounters with the revenants and mancubi, pretty cool. One Casali's. Compound was kinda lame, I only really remember it because of the staircase to the yellow key that you have to drop down. Neurosphere is a really cool name, but just kinda boring to navigate. I got lost so many times, I didn't know where I was supposed to go for so long. And I didn't even remember playing NME. When I was looking at the notes to my script for this stage, I had to re-watch almost the entire thing because I'm like, I don't remember playing this. Hello, goodbye, oh, hey, hello again. I'll make up his mind eventually. Death Domain has a pretty cool teleporting bear and a lot like that arch vial back in speed. And I love Stu Boy's custom MIDI that's kind of more ambient than anything else we've seen to this point. This track got reused in Eve Eternity, or maybe it started in that game. I'm not entirely sure. I played Eve Eternity once, I thought it was pretty cool. Never beat it, maybe I'll stream it. Slayer is kind of unique for being the only non-secret level to have the same amount of enemy spawns and pickups across every difficulty for some reason. That and the fact that there's no secrets here make me think that this level was tacked on at the last minute. And I mean, it's a pretty safe level. It's not bad, not hard, just kind of there. I liked it though. Uno de Nero. There's nothing impossible about this impossible mission. I found it to be quite possible, Tom Cruise be damned. It's not my favorite level, but it's got some really memorable moments, like the sewer segment, trudging across all this toxic waste and falling down into larger pits. I was losing my fucking mind though while recording this stage because I started listening to Living Tombstone's FNAF music. The movie just came out at this point, that's how long I'd been sitting on this project for, and I could not stop thinking about how cool it was for this YouTuber to get his fan art music project actually played inside of a movie. Like damn, that's gotta be a huge honor. Closest I got was talking to Hugo, which definitely was cool, but I'll never reach the point of, hey, my review was played in the credits of a movie. Yeah, that's not happening. Mission Possible has a moment that I always think of though when Plutonia is mentioned, and it's this room with the invisible walls and the chain gunners that walk out of this scrolling spine texture. I don't even know if I'd say that this is a good encounter, but it catches you off guard because the invisible wall is solid for a short point until you trigger something else. And then they just walk out of it and you're like, what the fuck? It just throws you for a loop. It's really cool. It's really good. It's one of those memorable moments that Plutonia is so good at. Two dongleberries. And then there's Tombstone, which is just very basic. So many of the secrets just have like one or two rockets in them. That's kind of weird. No, oh, one of the secrets has an arch vial in it. That's so nice of you, Kasali. Oh my god, it was like the insurance guy from The Incredibles taking over my body right there. What the hell? There's like a dozen fucking blue armors in this stage, and it's not even worth it to save one for right before you leave because they give you a mega sphere at the beginning of the next level. I like the stage aesthetically, though. I'll give it a dollar. The final frontier sucks. It's just Plutonia's the pit. It's got large open rooms, lots of death pits in it, and even has switches that are required for progression that are just really easy to miss sometimes. Not a fan. Temple of Darkness is better. I like this encounter early 
early on with the four Hell Knights and the one Baron and all of these switches that you need to activate by killing all the chain gunners inside of them, just like how there's shotgunners inside of the walls near the end. I feel like this should bother me more than it does, but I actually didn't mind it. They make their presence known really well, and I mean, you see windows, they may be a texture, but you know what windows are. And map 26 is a bit of an anomaly. Not the level itself, the level is just okay. But there's a megasphere in the middle of it that's supposed to be flagged as a secret, but just isn't. And GZ Doom, the source port that I'm using for this, is just hard-coded to not count that secret towards the end count. I, I tested a couple of other things, I thought that maybe it was the midi pack that fixed it, maybe it was Smooth Doom, no, it's GZ Doom. The wad that I'm using for Plutonia is the one that was available in the final Doom product from Steam. I don't know if you could buy it anymore, but I wanted to make sure that maybe that version was just fixed. It wasn't. I loaded the exact same wad file into DOSBox and it still told me that there are four secrets instead of the three. I don't know. I could have just looked it up, but I had fun figuring out what the deal was. Antichrist has an awesome trek, but the level otherwise, it's okay. It feels a lot like the last level from Doom 2, mostly just in regards to the scale of the stage. And there's a couple moments that you could coax them in fighting. That's always pretty fun. Definitely helps take my mind off of how 100% kills in this map is just literally impossible. There's an unkillable arch file in the middle of a wall that keeps a chain gunner alive so that no matter how many attempts you do this stage, you're always gotta be two below the kill count. That's fine. I don't really mind it. I actually think it's pretty cool that they did something wacky and just had no consideration of people that try to UV max their stages. They just want to make something fun, which is probably why they put it right before the sewers. This level, if not the entire campaign, made me realize why Civi hates sewers so much. They're aesthetically so boring and claustrophobic, but it's okay, this one has a library in it so I could learn about single family zoning laws. And look, this sewer is just like that pain elemental room from Doom 64, except it's completely missing the point. Where's the mullets? Oh, uh, not another teleporting arch file. Come on, man. Oh, uh, what's next? A city level? All right, stay with me. It's actually a pretty good city level. I know, that's heresy. They were terrible in Doom 2, but these ones are good. Rather, this one. It's just one good city level. Regardless, I was still stuck on it for a whole hour and a half, and not so much because it was hard. It's just there's so many enemies here, and it's a huge map. You gotta snipe imps out of windows, chain gunners out of windows, take out a giant cyber demon in the middle of the map, snipe some mancubi in the distance in an area that you can't even reach. I ended up having to replay the level because I went into the exit not realizing that a bunch of caco demons and pain elemental spawn after you activate the blue key, making you do more laps around this circuit just to get all the kills. It's huge and arguably just a lot of busy work, but I, I still enjoyed it. It's a great final level before the real final level sort of map, you know? Two noises of the Odyssey. The Gateway of Hell asks the age-old question of what if the icon of sin was hard? It also asks what if it was difficult? And its answer might surprise you. It's putting a cyber demon right in front of it. I think the edible was kicking in when I was taking notes for this because so much of my notes is just quotes from Dracula flow. Like here, uh, 37 seconds. Why does the gateway to hell look like a pussy? And then under that, in bullet points, pastrami mud flaps, they forgot that I'm him. Another note is, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, why is it the icon of sin again. Sub bullet point, icon of sin, more like I can't eat gin. Okay, okay, last one. I, I wrote these months ago. I don't, I don't remember. I'm trying to bait enemies into fighting the cyber demon, but I use Optifine to stare into the eye of God and he waved at me with his appendix. I I'm not trying to do this for like an XD random thing. I don't know why I wrote these. Functionally, aside from the enemies and the infinite amount of demons that he spawns, it is just the icon of sin again. Though not like the demon spitter from Final Dooms, uh, what was it? TNT Oh my god, I'm actually forgetting the name. TNT Evolution. Yeah, that, that one. There, you could just sit in the right spot and fire rockets into the brain without even having to do much. Here, it's just like Doom 2. You gotta go up this little lift, shoot a rocket at the right spot, jump off, shoot another rocket if you're lucky, lather, rinse, repeat, and pray that you don't die. I don't got much to say. It's just the icon of sin again. Nice job. You've done it. You've the accelerator inverts sucking everything down with you. Wow, I must have been fucked up writing this. Hell is back to pounding bad people instead of good people. God, I wish that were me. What the fuck? Put a rocket launcher in your coffin. You're gonna need it when you- What did I write here? Put a rocket launcher in your coffin. You're gonna need it for some cleanup. Don't fucking test me. <laughs> I need to do more scripts when I'm under the influence. This is awesome. Don't do drugs, kids. Remember, winners don't do drugs. 